When you go to a gallery, chances are that you'll be looking for beautiful landscapes, detailed portraits, and surrealist masterpieces that depict the world around us. However, the truth of the matter is that self-portraits can often be some of the most powerful paintings on display. Capturing the raw emotion of the artist, their perspectives, states of mind, and techniques at play often make self-portraits some of the best pieces that an artist will have to offer. Today, we take a look at the top 10 self-portraits of all time. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy watching some intriguing history. Number 10. Self-Portrait in a Convex Mirror While artists from the Renaissance may not be widely associated with self-portraits, Parmigianino decided to make his own in a very creative way by making use of a convex mirror. Born on January 11, 1503, in the Italian city of Parma, he had been fascinated with distortion from a young age and was known to go against the classic Renaissance style by creating lifelike portraits that had aspects of them that were off-kilter. And of all these off-kilter paintings, his self-portrait in a convex mirror is easily one of his most famous. Painted on a convex panel so that it could imitate the curve of the convex mirror, he reportedly used the painting as a showcase piece for potential clients, with the hope that it was masterful enough to convince others to commission works from him. Therefore, while Parmigianino may not be the most well-known Renaissance artist out there, we'd still say that his innovative self-portrait was an elite piece of art. Number 9. Hand with Reflecting Sphere While strange distortions may not have been the norm during the Renaissance, they were far more in vogue by the 20th century. And this more unique style is made fully apparent in M.C. Escher's 1935 painting, Hand with Reflecting Sphere. Escher was a Dutch artist who was born on June 17, 1898, and while he had very little mathematical ability himself, he was obsessed with the possibilities math could give to his paintings. As such, he would commission academics such as Frederick Hogg and Roger Penrose to help inform his works, which often delved into mathematical experimentation with the use of objects and operations such as explorations of infinity, truncated and stellated polyhedra, tessellations, and impossible objects. These themes are evident in Hand with Reflecting Sphere, as while it is a self-portrait of himself looking into a sphere, the focus is less on himself and more on what the sphere does to distort what is being reflected in the image. As such, we'd say that if you're someone who loves math, then you may want to look into more of M.C. Escher's artwork. Number 8. Self-Portrait with Bandaged Ear Vincent van Gogh was the dictionary definition of a misunderstood man. Born in the Netherlands on March 30, 1853, he was considered to be a madman and a failure for the entirety of his life, as he sold very few paintings and was often confined to hospitals for the mentally ill. However, after he died, he became a worldwide sensation, and it didn't take long for his self-portraits to become famous. His 1889 work, Self-Portrait with Bandaged Ear, is easily chief among them, as it depicts Van Gogh after an especially strange episode. The story goes that during a period where the artists Vincent Van Gogh and Paul Gauguin were living together, Van Gogh had threatened Gauguin with a razor, and after Gauguin fled, Van Gogh ran off to his room and ended up severing part of his own left ear, which he then sent to a girl who was working at a nearby brothel. This caused him to have it bandaged up, and it was soon after the injury that he created this self-portrait. Therefore, it should come as no surprise that the capturing of the aftermath of this violent outburst has made this painting a standout. Number 7. Reflection with Two Children Lucian Freud was certainly a family man. After all, he was a very private person and would generally create artwork that featured his friends and family. Such was certainly the case with Reflection with Two Children. Created in 1965, it depicts Freud looking down at a mirror on the ground, while his children Rose and Ali Boyd look on from the corner. It goes without saying that the self-portrait is very unusual, as it showcases Freud as a colossal figure with a void of grey around him, while his children are very tiny figures. According to many critics, this symbolizes alienation and anxious self-consciousness, which were themes that were present in many of the artist's other works as well. Therefore, while this self-portrait is strange, it certainly has an interesting perspective. Number 6. Self-Portrait with Physilis As with most artists out there, Egon Schiele had a rather interesting career. Born on June 12, 1890 in Austria, his career truly began after being taken under the wing of the famous Gustav Klimt, and throughout his career, he was able to attract quite a following. Now, Schiele was well known for his self-portraits, yet his self-portrait with Physilis is one of his most famous. Painted in 1915, it depicts Schiele with a Physilis plant beside him, 
and it depicts emotions of both self-confidence and fragility. After all, while it is apparent that he is giving a self-assured glare into the eye of the beholder, he is also white like a skeleton and quite frail, suggesting a duality that really is quite jarring. Interestingly enough, these themes would change so that Shiel would make more erotic, daring, and grotesque images as time went on. Yet, unfortunately, this would not last for long. That's because on October 31st, 1918, he would die from Spanish flu, and given that he was just 28 years old, this marked a tragically early end to the life of a great artist. Number 5. Self-Portrait as the Allegory of Painting Women generally did not get their time in the sun during the Renaissance, as most were confined to traditional family roles during this time period. However, as a follower of Caravaggio and the daughter of esteemed artist Orazio Gentileschi, Artemisia Gentileschi, she was able to have quite the career. Of all her paintings, one of her most famous is Self-Portrait as the Allegory of Painting. The portrait depicts her as she paints, which was a rare scene at the time, since women were typically not the ones doing such work. Therefore, when you further consider the masterful strokes and use of tones displayed in the painting, it's not hard to see why many were, and still are, impressed with this piece of artwork. Number 4. Portrait of a Man in Red Chalk Out of all of Leonardo da Vinci's artwork, Portrait of a Man in Red Chalk is by far one of the most controversial. Created in 1512, it depicts an old man with long hair, a long beard, and a wrinkled countenance, and it is considered by many to not just be a regular portrait, but a rare self-portrait by Leonardo himself. One of the primary reasons that many people believe this is because it is similar to Leonardo in both Raphael's possible depiction of him as the model for Plato in The School of Athens, and confirmed depiction of him in Vasari's second edition of The Lives of the Artists. However, many Leonardo experts are skeptical of this attribution, with many instead believing that the painting may be of Leonardo's father or uncle, since the picture seems to be of a very old man. However, given that it was made so long ago, we may never know the true identity of the person behind the portrait of a man in red chalk. Number 3. Self-Portrait Facing Death While some of the artists on this list may be unknown to the casual art enthusiast, Pablo Picasso is one of the most famous masters of the modern era. Born in the city of Malaga in Spain on October 25, 1881, he became famous during his life for his surrealist paintings, with his 1937 painting Guernica easily being one of the most evocative and well-respected pieces created during his career. However, while his self-portrait, self-portrait facing death, may not be quite as well known, it also gives some strong insights into Picasso's style. Painted about one year before his death, it is a very abstract piece that has strange lines, wide eyes, and a number of strange colors. It depicts the emotions of a man who is battered by time and facing his own mortality while being both terrified and brave. And reportedly, Picasso would hold the painting up to his own face while in front of his friends to showcase his feelings. Therefore, while most self-portraits depict the struggles of life, Picasso's shows the struggles of a man facing death. Number 2. The Prodigal Son in the Brothel while most self-portraits depict the artists in a way that mirrors either their mental or physical state, Rembrandt's The Prodigal Son in the Brothel stands apart due to its use of biblical themes to give the self-portrait some extra meaning. Born on July 15, 1606, Rembrandt is widely considered to be one of the best artists in human history, as his series of drawings, printings, and paintings has led to many seeing him as a master in all three mediums. And while Rembrandt certainly didn't limit himself to self-portraits, his The Prodigal Son in the Brothel was one of his best. That's because he used the biblical story of the prodigal son as a vehicle, as he placed himself as the prodigal son and his own wife, Saskia, as the prostitute. This has been seen by many as the insertion of a moral theme into the work, which, due to Rembrandt's fascination with religion, would be typical for his work. Therefore, we'd certainly say that The Prodigal Son in the Brothel is quite different from most of the other self-portraits on this list. Number 1. Self-Portrait with Thorn Necklace and Hummingbird Frida Kahlo is without question a queen in the self-portrait scene, as some of her most famous works are paintings showcasing her black unibrow, slight mustache, and red, rosy cheeks. Born in Mexico City on July 6, 1907, her art career truly began at the age of 18, when a near-fatal bus accident left her bedridden for three months, which, in turn, led to her starting to paint. And while she would end up being in chronic pain for the rest of her life, this pain would greatly influence her art, which often combined themes from her Mexican heritage 
colorful style, and perpetual pain. Of all the self-portraits she painted of herself, self-portrait with thorn necklace and hummingbird was easily one of her best. Painted in 1940, one year after her divorce from Mexican painter Diego Rivera, it is believed to be a direct reflection of her emotional state after the split. The painting shows her with a monkey on her right and a black panther on her left, while a thorn necklace is piercing her neck while she looks on with a stoic stare. Many believe that this is a representation that, despite the pain she has experienced, be it the symbols of the panther, monkey, and necklace, she was still able to endure her suffering. Therefore, we'd say that this painting is very deep. Tell us what you think in the comments. Did we miss any self-portraits that should have made the list? For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.